All right. Good morning, everybody. Today, we're here to review the October recap releases or recap the releases for October for all the applications. Please feel free to ask any questions. So starting on the meetings and trainings page at the bottom, you can find all the recaps for both years. We'll go to October and we're gonna start with USAS, which had two regular releases and one hot fix. I'm gonna talk about the hot fix first cause that was the bug. And this hot fix included the five-year forecast line 7.01, which is the cash balance at the beginning of the year, but it was for the third prior year. So what the bug did, this amount did not include the other accounts that were flagged as um, to include in general. So for example, these accounts, if you pull this under the cash account, if you pull this include as general into your grid with the more button, you can see these were flagged or marked to include in the general. So into the five-year forecast. And then I viewed one of these and pulled it up and where it is, is this, it's check marked. So it should have been included in that figure this should have been the amount. So the hot fix corrected that. But I would um, I would have the district, districts that have submitted re-verify the beginning balance of the fiscal year 2021. And if needed, they can use the SSDT financial forecast extract um, from the periodic menu. And then they should rerun the extract and resubmit the data in order to have this correct account. Now, this is just an example. These accounts might not be flagged for your specific um, districts, but that's why I showed you, you know, how to find that. Does anybody have any questions on that? All right, so another, uh, one of the releases included an improvement to the pending transaction menu. So this allowed the user to auto assign or to assign a purchase order number. So I have an example of that as well. So if you go under transaction, pending transaction, so like the retirement, when you go to post, you can let this auto assign or you can enter whatever one that you want assigned. So that's the new feature. Same with um, like Medicare distribution. When you go to post, it'll have that purchase order box that you, the user can enter. And then the developers did their, created their REST controllers, which are for future use and it doesn't impact the application. So but those were for the refunds, AP invoices, and the purchase orders. And then back to, sorry, I keep flipping back and forth. Under the help menu, oops, these uh, documentation links, both here and here, will now take you to the correct wiki link, which starts with, with which starts with MCOECN. So those links have been updated with the release. And that is all for USAS. So I will stop sharing and let you let the US, USPS team share their updates. Thank you. All right, everybody should be seeing um, the USPS 
screen, hopefully. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm gonna assume that's a yes. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> we'll switch gears and move on to um, the two USPS releases that we had in October. Um, they were both regular releases. Not you know a whole lot to cover. Um, you know I know the developers have been working on you know finalizing all that um, W two and year end um, those enhancements and so forth. So um, I'll go through the bug fixes and improvements that we did have in October. Um, the first being the SERS per pay report. Um, there was um, a specific situation that was causing a severe error. Um, and that was happening when um, users were adding adjustments for either the total gross or the applicable gross for an employee to force them onto the report. Um, you know, these employees were not processed during the payroll. Um, so just adjustments for, you know, total gross and or applicable gross were being added so that, um, you know, the district's, <clears throat> the district was wanting to get those employees reported. Um, so that has now been corrected. Um, they will no longer cause that severe error and should appear on the report um, as expected. Um, the next was also correcting an issue with the SERS per pay report when employees had multiple earnings codes or those earn codes um, as in one of those being an adjustment so an adjustment file was created. It was actually um, forcing an extra day on that adjustment file to be included um, when it should not be. So that um, has also been corrected. I did wanna point out that um, in upcoming releases, um, they are all scheduled currently for 7.5. Um, there are multiple enhancements and in, in, um, fixes going out. Um, on the per pay, SERS per pay report. So look for those, um, you know, in the next, I think, you know, a couple releases, you should see um, those four enhancements to that per pay report happen as well. So I just wanted to bring those to your attention that those will be forthcoming. Um, <clears throat> next, an enhancement was made to the SSDT employee birthday report. So you can actually generate that report for a specific building code. Um, so those that are not familiar with that report, um, it is a, a SSDT template report. And this is the report we're talking about. So when I click the generate option and, and I go to the query options tab, you um, can actually generate this just for a specific building um, if that's what you're wanting to do. Um, in the past, this was not working. Um, but now that has been fixed. So if you enter a building code um, in this uh, query parameter, it should generate the report um, and only for that building. Um, next, um, a couple of releases ago when um, enhancements were made to the W2 report, it actually broke the sorting, um, you know, uh, by last name, first name, middle name. So that sort was actually inadvertently removed. Um, so we, the developers added that back. So now when you run the W2 report, um, it will sort um, as you expect it to. Moving right along then, um, there was an issue with employee onboarding um, resulting in an error when you were actually viewing a record. Um, they, they pinpointed this down to um, when a, a date was entered um, that was not, you know, maybe it, it only they only entered five digits or something, you know, out of range, so to speak. It was causing um, in an error when viewing the um, records in employee onboarding. So that has now been fixed. When it comes to dates, I know that those have been a kind of, um, you know, sore um, spot for districts, you know, please know that we are, developers are looking into trying to prevent, you know, invalid dates to be entered. Um, and this would be something that would be in common. So it's, it would happen, you know, across all applications. So hopefully in the near future, you know, there will not be a way to enter, 
you know, some kind of obscure date that's going to result in um, any errors or issues um, in any of the applications. And then lastly, when it comes to the bug fixes, um, there was an issue with the system validating or checking um, federal and retirement um, payroll items when a start date was used. So even if you know a start date that equaled the pay date um, that the district was processing, um, if, if that matched, it was actually creating an error. Um, so, you know, those start dates, if it does equal the pay date, then it should pull into the payroll and there should be no error generated. Um, but that check was missed or inadvertently coded when it came to federal and retirement um, payroll items. So it was actually producing an error when it shouldn't be. So now that has been um, updated in this in the system, so those errors should no longer um, happen. All right, I don't think there's any message or uh, questions in the chat. So again, feel free to you know ask at any time or or place those in the chat, and we'll be happy to answer those. Um, moving right along to the improvements, then. Um, the STRS um, salary minimum was changed. Um, it used to be 30,000, that was increased to 35,000. And that was actually effective, uh, you know, about a month ago, um, beginning October 3rd. So the software was enhanced to um, meet those STRS requirements. I did link here um, the actual kind of newsletter um, article that went out um, from STRS regarding this um, increase in the salary um, minimum. So if you have any further questions on that or you know need to read up on that, um, you should be able to click right on that link and it'll take you to that um, newsletter that STRS published. And then next, um, our Ohio State tax tables were updated. Um, this went in effect on November 1st, so just a few couple days ago. Um, again, I've linked um, the um, news flash or update um, from uh, the publication regarding, you know, these this the tax tables being adjusted. So if you have any additional questions or want to read up on on those changes, you can click on that link as well, and that'll take you to um, information regarding those tax tables being changed. Next, um, the, there's a new option on the payroll item configuration um, screen, and that's called Add Gross to Payables Reports. Um, this then controls or now controls whether um, the gross is included on the payables detail report or not. So we had requests um, to add the gross to the payables detail report. And then we also, after that enhancement was released, we had requests to not always include the gross or have the user have the ability to control what gross, um, you know, what payroll items actually print the gross and, and others, you know, not have that printed. So if we go to core and then payroll item configuration, um, you'll see here, if I open up this um, 500 payroll item configuration, you'll see the option here that we added called Add Gross to Payables Report. So this checkbox here is what's going to control whether the gross is printed or not printed on um, that payables um, detail report. So you'll see here this 500 I do not have or I'm sorry, I have that box checked, so that sh gross should be printed. And then I have another, it was five, yeah, 603, that I have unchecked to not include that um, gross on within the details of the report. So if I run that payables detail report then, and I've already done that, <clears throat> if I search for the 500, you can see because I had that checkbox checked, that gross is included. Okay, so if districts are printing these reports to like submit with, you know, payments and those sorts of things, 
they have a you know a little bit more control over um, what information is being included in that um, on that report um, that detail that they're they're submitting with the payment. So again, you know maybe for something like United Way, you know I don't really need. Um, didn't I say that was six oh three? Well, make a liar out of me. I did I not have that checked? Unchecked, I mean. <laughs> okay, we have 603. So that one is not checked. What did I do wrong here? If I go to processing, processing outstanding payables. I'm going to run my payables detail report. Let me just pull those two over. I'm sorry, I thought I looked, had this all set up before. Okay, so I'm gonna have to check as to why, oh, I'm sorry, it is, it is not, it's not printing the gross. So you can see these are all zeros. I was looking at this total here and that's a little deceiving, isn't it? I'm gonna have to uh, point that out to the developers, I'm sorry. So you can see here, it does not list the gross. Um, so I wasn't losing my mind when I ran this <laughs> before and had everything set up. So it will not include then the gross for those employees that are having this payroll item withheld. Um, whereas, you know, when I had that checkbox marked, it is including the the gross then for um, those that are that are checked. Okay, sorry about that. I my mind saw that total figure under the total gross and didn't understand. But I didn't look at the details. Okay, are there any questions? Because I've probably confused you a bit on um, adding that gross or not adding that gross to the payables detail report. All right. Hopefully, you know, districts are loving that option. I know that we had several requests to um, enhance that report a little bit when that gross originally got included um, and that update happened. So hopefully that makes them happy. Um, next is the um, convert personal leave to sick and convert personal leave to pay options are now going to exclude um, archive positions and compensation. So you know, those no those um, employees that are archived will no longer be included in those um, uh, reports and conversions so that, um, you know, they really shouldn't be. So that was an improvement um, so that those no, no longer, those employees are no longer included. The payment transaction status report um, was updated so that standard read-only users have access so for instance, auditors and those kind of accounts or kind of um, user accounts that just have standard read-only access, they can now view that payment transaction status report. And then as um, Pat mentioned earlier, um, because our wiki is, you know, has been converted, um, the links then in the help um, we'll now point to though that correct um, URL. So again, if you go to the help option and you click on documentation, you know, if this, if you're seeing a link um, that does not start out with MCOECN, chances are then you're using that old URL and keep in mind that old URL is not being updated. Um, so you might have, you know, incorrect or out of date information. So make sure that, you know, you're bookmarking um, the new um, URL and those should all start out with MCOECN. Okay. And then lastly, um, we are continuing to improve each and every report so that the font is not changed. Um, we, um, you know, looked and looked and looked at um, those reports that you all 
were sending us um, in trying to determine how the font was being changed um, because it wasn't um, anything, you know, apparent in the software side, you know, no changes have been made on our end. Um, so finally, um, one of the last reports of the font changing some details within that ticket that came in, um, you know, triggered one of our developers to um, pinpoint actually why that was happening. So every single report um, is actually being um, looked at and reworked so that that will no longer happen. So anytime you see this improved styling on and then the report name, that's actually um, the, the issue to correct the font um, so that you're not seeing those font size vary, you know, from time to time. So if you're looking for a specific, you know, issue um, to see if or when that report might um, be being updated, always look for this improved styling. You can search for that and then the report name, and that should take you then to the appropriate issue. And you can see if it, you know, when it's being reworked and um, expected to be scheduled and fixed. Okay. All right. Does anybody have any questions um, on any of the releases and enhancements, bug fixes that we um, that were released in October? Okay, one other thing that's not really related to um, any of the changes that we've <clears throat> already talked about, um, but I did want to make you aware of a, a chapter that we've added. Um, if you go to our appendix, and if you go to the useful procedures, we've actually added um, a section, a chapter within this um, useful procedures called correcting retirement when no retirement was withheld. So we've had a lot of questions as far as, you know, how do I fix that? And it does, you know, it is situation dependent. So, you know, it's not always cut and dry. Um, but hopefully we've broken this out into, you know, correcting re, re, the both each retirement system. So SERS and then actually down if I scroll towards the bottom, STRS, and then whether it's for the current fiscal year, I'm sorry, the current calendar year, current fiscal year or, or a prior fiscal year. So within each of those um, options, then we have a couple different scenarios and, and ways to fix, you know, whether you're gonna, you wanna, you know, run this through as an error adjustment during a payroll, um, whether you, you know, the district has already fronted the money to the retirement system, and now they, you know, are just basically withholding that from the employee, but it's being paid back to the board. Um, so hopefully this will be helpful. Um, because we all know that this does happen. Um, please know that we do have some JIRA issues in place um, to hopefully prevent this from happening. Um, you know, making sure that there's the two parts. You know, if you have the have one, you need the other, um, and so forth. So until that enhancement happens, you know, and we all know that this, you know, these situations, as as much as we preach to everybody to check, check, check. Um, it does happen. So um, we have put together this document and hopefully you'll find that helpful. Okay, so I did wanna point that out, not really related to um, any of the release um, changes, but just so you guys are aware that it is out there and, and feel free to take a look and um, you know step through those that checklist, so to speak, if, if you run into that situation. All right. Are there any other, don't see anything else in the chat. I will stop sharing my screen then and I'll turn this over to um, Michelle to talk about inventory. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and we'll talk to you soon. Good morning, everybody. Hoping everyone can hear me okay. Um, and you can see my screen okay.
I have um, the two releases that went out in inventory. We had one on October 3rd and another one on the 29th. And so before we get started here, I'm going to move my chat over. Okay. So um, in uh, 1.42, we had some uh, bug fixes that were taken care of. Um, underneath uh, the system menu, underneath the import option, we did update the item importer. Um, so when you're uh, when you're importing items um, underneath that option um, to allow transfers to be created for items that contain a blank fund function or asset class. So if you were going in and creating um, or updating items and you had that uh, transfer option selected, you were getting an error. And that's because that item had an empty fund function or asset class. So we changed that then to make that transfer ha happen. Um, also underneath import, we corrected the disposition import to prevent an error when the amount received field was blank. There were people trying to post disposition transactions and they weren't getting an error there. So the amount received field may be blank or maybe zero. They didn't receive anything. So it shouldn't pre prevent them from posting those dispositions. So we made the update to that. Also underneath the system menu in the user option, we corrected um, an issue with the expiration date on the admin account in an instance. So it wasn't extending the expiration date 90 days. So if they went in and changed the password or something, it didn't extend that date, um, thus not being able to log in into the admin account. So we fixed that so that it sets it just like it does with user accounts. Um, underneath transactions, um, the items, we corrected the location code sorting and filtering. So we improved it even more so. And so I kind of wanted to show you that. Um, we'll get to that in a little bit here. I'll just run through these other bug fixes. Underneath the um, gap reports, we corrected an issue with the schedule of change in fixed assets and the schedule of change and depreciation detail reports. Um, they were getting it, could have received an error um, from trying to generate these uh, reports when the fund was empty. So um, now you're able to generate those reports and it's the, I'm sorry, not the fund, but the fund type. So if there was a fund and it didn't have a related fund type, you weren't able to generate that detail report. Um, so we fixed that so you can now, and obviously those items that do not have a fund type associated with them are going to go underneath that undetermined section on those reports. And also one other thing we improved on is, um, well, I guess you could call it, it was a, a, a bug uh, issue, was underneath the export grid, um, that export grid function, that uh, box that you can click on to export information out of a grid, like the items grid. Um, the CSV option, you have an option to select Excel or CSV. Well, the CSV option uh, was having an issue, and what it was doing is it was recognizing some, like the commas and the quotes um, and leading zeros. It wasn't handling those well. So, for example, if you went in and maybe you had a comma in the serial number. So what was happening when you exported that out, it was taking that portion after the comma and putting it in another column, but it all should have stayed in the same. So um, we made updates to correct that. Um, and with that too, we noticed that um, with that fix, and that was, I think, JIRA issue uh, 437, um, it um, caused a few issues in the Excel version of the export grid items. And so we have another issue to fix those. It's issue 527. Um, and it just made that export using the Excel option. It look, just looks a little messy. Um, and so we want to clean that up. Um, so if you know, are you going in and extracting stuff out of those grids? I would recommend the CSV option right now um, just to avoid kind of the messiness on that um, Excel version. 
Um, so, and I don't think 527 is scheduled yet, but I know that's one that needs to be taken care of soon. Um, so we'll get that Excel version of that export grid option uh, cleaned up. Okay, so going back to the location codes here, I want to show you. Um, it's just so much easier now. Um, it wasn't recognizing the hyphen was one of the things. My mouse is kind of acting weird there. Um, and so if I just wanted to type in something, MS601, uh, um, it just wasn't recognizing the hyphen at all, and I couldn't do a sort in here. Um, plus, it was also um, having an issue with the case sensitivity. So now we fix both of those so that you can go and actually search on a particular location code without having to use a wildcard. Before, you would have to put a wildcard in between MS and 601. Um, so we've changed that now that if you want to go out there and find any item that has a specific location code, you can. And it doesn't matter if it's lowercase or um, uppercase. So it's just going to find everything. So that case sensitivity is gone. Um, so, but, you know, there are a few little issues or uh, things that you still have to use a wildcard for. If I want to go in and put in like um, 01, um, you know, it does pull some this stuff up. Um, I think if I go in and like sort it then, um, take a look here. So it is kind of, it is, I, yeah, the sorting uh, looking really good here because I'm looking, I'm saying I just want 01. And so you notice I've got, um, well, I got the C's, I got the F's, I've got the, you know, it's starting with that. If I put in the wild card, use my mouse here. I don't know if that's going to change things much, um, but I still will be able to see anything that starts with 01. And then I could kind of play around with my sorting. And I'll see now 010, 01Bs. So it kind of does a, a pretty good sort here. Uh, based on what I entered in that location, and I can go in here and search for that information. So you can still use the wildcards, but um, we have improved the location in, um, quite a bit, especially when, you, like I said, you're looking for a specific location code. Okay, go back. Um, some improvements that we made, and this is where I really want to get into detail. Um, the first one, just uh, like what Pat and Lori was talking about, we did update the help underneath the about uh, to link to the new Atlassian um, cloud wiki. Um, so when we migrated everything over to the cloud, um, obviously, again, if you don't see MCOCN ahead of it, when you're looking for the uh, user documentation for inventory, it's going to be the legacy wiki. Um, it should, it has to have the MCOCN um, in front of it at the beginning of the URL. So we made sure that um, the help menu and all of that information is pointing to the new wiki. And the other big improvement that we've made is on splitting items. Um, made some big improvements here. Uh, the first being the pop-up window, we just made it larger so that you can see all the fields better, um, and uh, including totals for the number of split items, um, the original cost, things like that. Um, but what the big thing that we've done here is we have given you guys the ability or the users the ability to modify field values when you split a tag. Before, you just put in the new starting tag number, the number of tags to split, you did the projection, and it just split them out evenly. You had no option to go in and change um, the serial number or the model number, the things like that, or the location code. Now you have the ability to do that. Um, so I want to take you through an example of how to do that. So I'm going to go down or go over to the split here. I'm in the items grid, and so I'm going to pick on one of these here. I'm going to split on this tag, or, or do a, a split on this tag here. You'll notice that the number of items is four, and my original cost is 38.51. So obviously, if I did the math, which I did beforehand, uh, and divide that out by four, it's $962.75 each. So I'm just saying that right now because um, we'll see that uh, when we do the split. 
And so in order to split, I need to view that item. And then, so again, here is my item. Here is the number of items for. Here's my original cost of 38.51. So if I use the split here, um, you know, the screen looks almost the same. We got a few little uh, uh, added bells and whistles here. Uh, first off, um, we can, we'll definitely still have to do a validate input. Um, to make sure that the tag numbers that I'm going to split this out to don't already exist. So if I have a 190967 already in the system and I do a validate, I'm going to get an error saying, hey, that tag number already exists. You need to use a set of tags that are outside that haven't been used yet. So I know that I have uh, 190967 already, so I'm just going to change this. And I know that starting with tag 290966, I don't have those on the system. Now, the new thing that you're going to see is it's asking you for the number of tags to split. And you'll see these uh, plus and minus. And also, because I know that the tag originally had four items, I can't go past that. So it, it helps me out here by saying, hey, you have a max of only four to split out. So I can split it out one, two, three, or four. Uh, so if I want to, I can just use this and go up to four. Um, and, you know, if I want to just divide it out into two separate tags, I can do that. And so at this point, um, you'll notice that there is an edit item, but it's not going to let me um, go in and actually edit these items um, to maybe change a serial number or a model number until I validate the tag numbers that I entered in first. So, and what I like also is projection is always default. So I can be, so I can, you know, check this out first to make sure that everything's good before I actually do the actual split. So I like that default option. So I'll go ahead and validate this. And obviously it was successful. I didn't get like an extra pop-up, which is nice. And it's just basically telling me, hey, you're going in and um, your numbers that you put in are good to go. I could go ahead and proceed and just do a split item projection on this if I wanted to. Um, and it's basically going to take the information from this tag and divide it up into four separate tags, split out evenly. So that's that uh, number that I told you, the 962.75 each. Um, but also you'll notice that, kind of look in the background here, I've got serial numbers on this tag, model numbers, organization codes, location codes, all of those, if I don't edit them, they're all going to show up with the same serial number and model number, those four tags. If I want to go in and change those before I actually split it, here is where this edit item comes into play. So it brings up this. So that's kind of like that second screen and split item um, in Classic. Um, and so from here is where I can go in and start making changes. So we picked the um, columns that uh, we felt were going to be probably edited most often. And basically, they were the same ones that were from uh, Classic. And so in here, it divided it up into four separate tags with the tag number, starting tag number. Um, and it just went down consecutively. Here is the serial model number. So again, if I didn't do anything here, those same serial model numbers are going to appear in each tag. Well, I want to change them. Um, also, I can change the organization code, um, like the building where these are being housed, and uh, specifically the location. So you'll notice I've got uh, drop downs here in order to pick them. I can start entering in information in here, and it will filter in either the organization or the location or I can click on the drop down and select something. Um, so one thing I want to tell you about is if I go in here and I start playing around with this, and let's say I want to go in and I'm changing the serial number to maybe all ones or something like that. And I realize after I'm making entries in here that, yeah, I don't want four tags. I want three. Um, if I go in and change this, which I can, I can go in and change this and say, I really want this split out to three. Um, what's going to happen is anything I entered in here already, when I click on refresh 
to refresh my number of tags that are going to be split out, it will lose anything that I've entered in here. So like I said, I changed the organization code to high school and I changed the serial number. So once I go in and, ch and change the number of tags and click refresh, it refreshes it and it goes out there and it fits those four tags into three now. So you'll notice the first one is two items on it. And then, then, and then the second is one and the third is one. But my serial number defaulted, it has to. It doesn't know where that 101 is supposed to go to. So it's going to go back to the original and also uh, my organization code defaulted back to. So just a strong word of caution when you're using refresh is, you know, if you need to really make sure that you have tag numbers correct and the number of takes correct before you start entering information in here. Um, but you'll see again that it went out there and divided this up. So really this tag has that $967 amount times two or $962 amount times two. So that's gonna be one amount. And then tag 67 is gonna have 962.75 cents and tag number uh, 68 is gonna have the same amount as 67. Now I know the next question is, can you put the uh, original cost on here somewhere too? Yes, um, we are working on that. It's going to be in an upcoming release. I think they're, they're reviewing it right now and I think it's scheduled, let me look here. The item's original cost, so that full you know, amount of that item uh, is going to be um, sh displayed up here. And also, once you split it out, we're going to include the original cost for each detail item as well. That is um, inventory issue number 511, and that is going to be on its scheduled for the 1.46 release. So we are definitely going to include that because I know you, help you go in here and say, where are the amounts? How is that splitting? So if I'm splitting this into three separate items, you know, item number one is going to have like double the amount because it's got two items on it. The next item is going to have one, and the and then the third item is going to have one. I want to see the original cost for each of those. Now, can you go in and modify the original cost? No. So you're not going to be able to go in and edit original cost. That that's a whole another ball of wax if you're trying to do that in here. Um, you're going to be able to see them. They're going to be read-only, but you won't be able to go in and edit those. Um, but like I said, it will be on that next, uh, on the 1.45 release that will have those amounts on there. Um, and so basically, um, once I go in, and what I love about this, is I can test this out. Because projection is still the default option, I haven't done anything yet. So let me see what this looks like. So I'm going to validate this. And then I'm going to split it projection because that's the default. And I'm going to look at my report. And here's what it looks like. So I split a report that had four items into three. So the first tag has two items on it still. And there's the 1925.50. And then the uh, second uh, tag has one item and then the third. So, and then that should equal what my original cost was uh, to begin with before I split them. Now, I know that you guys are going to have, I know what the next question is going to be. Um, what if, because um, I, I know we got this a lot, especially in classic, and I think we've gotten a few tickets so far already. Can I split and dispose of part of an item? Um, yes, you can. And I kind of want to show you a way to do that here. Okay. Haven't been playing around with this too much, but um, hopefully, you know, um, I think I've got it figured out. Um, so obviously if I went in and then actually split this out, it's gonna create three tags and I'll get an actual report showing the split. But I'm gonna cancel out of this one. I'm gonna bring up a different tag here. So here's one. It has a number of items of 10, okay? And my original cost, uh, original cost is 600. So I wanna split off a portion of this. 
Um, let's say it's something, you know, maybe a lot of chairs or something. I know that's a poor example. And I want to get rid of 20% of them. You know, I don't know exactly how many chairs they were, but I want to split off 20%. Um, and so I can go in and edit this. I'm sorry, view it and do my split. And again, I'm just going to change the number just in case those were sitting out there. And so I want to split off a portion. So what I want to do is I want to divide this by two, right? Um, because I want to keep that one tag out there intact with the 80%. And then I want to create a separate tag for the 20%. But then I'm going to go and post a disposition transaction against that second tag because that's the part I want to dispose of. So I'm going to make this two items. And I'm going to validate to make sure my tag numbers are good. And then now I want to go in. Now, if I just went in and split this, it's going to split it up 300 on tag number one and 300 on tag number two. That's a 50-50 split. Don't want that. I want it to be 80-20. And so what I can do is go to edit items. <clears throat> and I can control the number of items that I'm putting in here. So if I want to keep 73 out here and I want it to be 80% of the value of that original cost, I can do some tweaking of the numbers. Same thing here. If I want 74 to be 20%, I can do some tweaking of the number of items. And then this tag is the one I'm going to eventually dispose of. So I could make it like eight and two, which kind of makes sense to me. Change okay, so this one to two. And again, what I love is projections already set. So I can just go ahead and validate this and split it out. And I haven't done any harm yet. I'm just seeing what my report's gonna look like. And so here is the 600 and here is where I split it. So I've got two tags, one with eight items and one with two. Well, let me think about that. 20% of 600 is um, 120. And so that's the part then that I am going to, you know, move on with doing this and actually splitting these into two tags. And then what I'll do then is go in afterwards, after I split them, and take 290974 and dispose of that. I dispose of that 20%. So now I just then will have just that one tag um, with the 480. I hope that makes sense how you can split. Um, do you guys have any questions about the new split features? We have not updated um, the documentation yet with the new split changes. Um, so we will get that updated. And again, we will update it even more so after 511 is released. So like I said, 511 is going to display the original items, original cost value that'll be displayed up here. And also um, it's going to display the original cost for each detail line. Um, this will be a calculated field that um, will be updated anytime they make a change do a refresh. And again, this will be read only as well. And then there's going to be a total um, should sum up the detail lines. Um, so there will be, a, I think, a total down here as well. So you can see, you know, what, you know, you can review everything and make sure that everything looks good before you do the actual split. Um, also, like, we do have a couple other um, issues out there regarding splits. There is a small rounding issue that could happen. Um, so let's say you've got a $10 item and you're splitting it. Um, into two, you know, let's say it's got uh, 12 items, you know, the number of items is 12, it's a $10 item and you split it into two. We might have a like a cent issue where it might split it um, and it doesn't split it evenly, $5 and $5, it might be 498 and 502 and we're gonna fix that, it's a little bug. So that's scheduled for the 1.45 release. And also, um, and that's invoice and that's invoice issue 251. Also, we have invoice year issue 411 
it's also scheduled for the 1.45 release. Um, and so what's happening is during the split, it wasn't recognizing uh, tags with um, that have an alphanumeric numeric character in it. Um, so what's happening is um, it's not keeping, retaining that, it, it's excluding um, the zero at the end of those tags. And so, you know, numerically it can handle that. But if you've got a tag that starts out alphanumerically, and has an ending zero on the tag, it's it's skipping that one. And so that's gonna be fixed on the 1.45 release as well. So those two minor bugs, the rounding and the dropping of that ending zero are going to be on the 1.45. And then these additional enhancements uh, regarding the original cost and the totals are going to be included on the 1.46 release, um, which will, come out after 1.45. And I know they're working on all this right now. So we're hoping that um, those two releases will be out relatively soon. Um, so any other questions regarding the split? So like I said, you're going in, you're able to do a regular split, split just like you're used to. But when you select that edit item, you're able to go in here and make changes in here, change the number of tags, and, and check it out by leaving the projection um, check, the default check, run us a projection report and see what it looks like. And if everything looks good, then you just uncheck and you click on split items and it will generate obviously a new report with the two items. So again, if I would go now and look at 73 and 74, you know, they'll they both be out there on the grid. And then I could post a disposition transaction against 74 to dispose of that partial. Okay. If you guys don't have any further questions about the split, the only other thing I want to touch upon is what's coming up next. Um, so next week, can you believe it? It's our calendar year in review. I can't believe it's November already, let alone we're going over calendar year end uh, information. So that is going to be next Friday. So, you know, please be aware that this is going to be a longer um, a session, probably, you know, a couple hours to get through USAS and payroll. Um, so we will take care of that next Friday. And that gives you guys then plenty of time. Um, to, you know, look at the documentation presentations that we have out there regarding calendar and to get you guys ready for your uh, sessions with your district. Also, um, on the 17th of November, we're going to cover, in particular, W-2 printing and submission information. So when it comes to that, we're not going to get into the nitty gritty during the calendar year in review. The detailed information about the W-2, um, that's going to be handled during the November 17th. Um, and then here we are, almost at December. And so these are the upcoming um, presentation or phrase with fiscal we have for you guys in uh, December. And, uh, and also one other thing I wanted to mention is we do plan on doing the W-2C correction. Uh, planning on doing a training with you guys on that, but we're going to wait until maybe the end of January. I think I may have mentioned that before, um, not to confuse the actual regular submissions versus the correction submission. So we're going to hold off and do that one in January or beginning of February, somewhere around there. Okay, if you guys don't have any other questions, uh, I want to thank you guys again for being on today's call and uh, you guys have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you next week.